Hi, Sam Cedar here of the uh, Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Uh, next up, we have a uh, guest. Uh, we're going to play a clip of the trailer for his new album. Um, I uh, had booked this because I thought that the album was going to be something different than it was. We've had this guest on before. Um, he's um, uh, People know him as a, uh, a voice actor. And, uh, of course, the, his, probably his most prominent position is he is the uh, voice of the Majority Report. His name is uh, John Benjamin, or H. John Benjamin. He likes to, because um, I guess, I don't know, it makes you seem more important if you have an initial in front of your name. Uh, but let's um, uh, take a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll play a clip of his um, promo for his album. And that is the um, promotional video from the album John Benjamin Jazz Daredevil, the soundtrack collection. Um, on you the sound missed. Are you are you mad? No, I'm not mad. I'm just in the middle of of doing your uh, intro uh, on the phone. Is John yeah. Benjamin apparently the Jazz Daredevil? I mean, it just sounded like you. The intro was like, uh, like, like filled with disdain. Well, I don't. It's not a question of disdain. It, I, I just found like the you just video. saw something you didn't like, and then you had to make, do an intro about it after. That's what it sounded like. Well, all right. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you about that, uh, John. Welcome to the show. I guess. Thanks for having me. And thanks I, for that wonderful intro. I, I really appreciate it. I usually do better when uh, the guest actually lets me speak when I'm in the middle of the intro, but that's okay. Well, maybe it would be nice to let guests speak during their intro so that they could comment on how you're introing. Well, people can do that after I intro, or they can do it on Twitter or other mechanisms. Uh, can we... I guess most people would just move on, but I guess I didn't, so I don't know. That was just a decision I made in the moment. Okay. Well, that's fine. I respect that. But that decision was based on the way you were sounding at, after you watched something that I did. I, I, you know, maybe there were other things going on in my life today. Okay, that are uh, difficult. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about those? Do no, about I don't. So, John, um, you have been on the program before talking about your first album, which I was did. that was that was a long time ago, but that was in 2015. Was that in 2015? Yeah. Wow, has this thing really been five years in the making? Jeez. Yeah, so the last time that I made an album, you were in your 40s. Um, that's probably that's probably accurate. Um, I think you probably were too, John. Did you, did you not want me to talk about your age? Because it sounded like you didn't want me to talk about your no, age. No, it's just largely irrelevant. Uh, my point is, is that this is your second musical album, your first album was something to the effect of Jazz Daredevil, I Should Have. Right? Well, it was actually well, 
Well, I should have. Well, uh, I should have. Okay. Yes. Then an ellipsis, uh, and then an asterisk, and then the asterisk referred to the lower part of the album, which said learned how to play piano. Right. So and right. Technically, to- the, technically, the whole title was, Well, I Should Have Learned How to Play Piano. And that was for your 2015 album, where you actually paid professional jazz musicians to sit in a room and essentially uh, have to endure your playing the piano without any ability to play the piano. I mean, is that well, an accurate that's description? One, that's one way to frame it. I'm not sure they were playing the jazz music they always play, and I was uh, playing with them. I, that would be another way to put it. And just to round that out, you didn't know how to play the piano, but they were professional musicians. That's correct. It was my debut jazz album, and I didn't know how to play jazz at that time, uh, or didn't know how to play the instrument, the piano, at that time. Uh, wow. But I did play along with them. I think one of the things uh, that you just said really actually you know, is struck with me as I, as I prepared for this mm-hmm. um, interview. And okay. that was, you know, I guess I, I thought it was three years ago, but maybe it was five years ago. Uh, when you well, did your it was, album, it was 2015. So I don't know why you're. Well, whatever. Three or five years ago, it doesn't really matter, because I thought, oh, this will be interesting. I'll check in on John Benjamin Jazz Daredevil. He's done a soundtrack mm-hmm. collection, yep. and um, his first album was about how he didn't. Well, I should have learned to play the piano or whatever it was. Let me play a clip from your 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 next album. This is uh, uh, the theme from Chariots of Fire, which is a beautiful composition. Whenever I hear it, mm-hmm. almost ever, whenever I hear it, I can you still imagine. Yep. I tear up a little bit because I still like recall those um, British runners running through yep. the beach on some type of British uh, coastline, and it is incredibly moving. And then here is your rendition. Ren- heard enough you you never well i mean no you could uh yeah i mean you get the idea from that oh I, yeah we get the idea yeah, the i'll tell you what the idea is version of chariots of fire the way i can play it all right yes yes the idea is that despite the fact that you've had five years to prepare for your second album when in your first album you were so aware that you should have learned to play the piano that you called your album that five mm-hmm. years later you don't seem to have done anything to learn to play the piano. In fact, I listened to that, and instead of like the beautiful image of these, these the the human form running so desperately with so much joy and it yeah. across that beach, I see them stumbling. I see you're them like, falling uh, and, like and real, hurting you're themselves. You're like really into. You're like really into sports, or no? It was a beautiful wrestling. movie. It was incredibly inspiring. It's one yeah. of the movies that I think about whenever I'm low or down, and mm-hmm. I listen to this theme, well, this and should, in many ways, it like, ruins it for me. Well, I mean, I, my intention was not to ruin the movie. I've like the movie holds up, I guess. I'm not. I wasn't a big fan of Chariots of Fire the movie, but I, I did like the soundtrack. Um, that's why I picked the song, and I, I, I tried to play it the best way I could. And there are a lot of differences between the first album and this album. And I get you point out one thing that just happens to be the same, which is that I did not learn how to play, but I, I do play now on uh, electronic piano and not on 
acoustic. So that is a big difference. I made that decision going into it. I picked the music based on that. And um, uh, so that's a huge difference. Uh, and also I did, I'm doing all covers of soundtracks, which is also different than uh, doing original compositions, which, you know, like, so there's, there are differences. Right. Uh, there are differences. Uh, that is true. I also notice uh, here on the um, but I guess if your you're album, on the one your thing. album cover uh, is you're no longer wearing a daredevil outfit. You're wearing an astronaut outfit. I'm not quite sure I understand that. Well, um, I think it's some. It uh, has something to do with the you know the 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 sci-fi or electronic element that I, that I started. Chariots of Fire took place in the early 1900s. There was no, um, we were uh, decades away from any type of space exploration program. I don't even know that people, I mean, surely people could have imagined at that time, but I don't understand. Yeah. But the soundtrack was not made in the, when the movie was, when the movie took place. That's not how soundtracks work. They're not like when, like if you do a period movie, like, um, uh, room with a view right. the music was made contemporary to the making of the movie they don't pull uh, they didn't have the soundtrack ready to go from the period in which the movie took place well i mean they didn't have soundtracks probably i mean well maybe they did probably in uh, at, at the contemporaneous time in which the movie uh the film takes place but nevertheless right. i mean it's I mean, I thematically it doesn't make any sense What's so daredevilish about going to uh, in the space program? It is, um, it's almost diametrically opposed to that. If it was, it would be horribly re- irresponsible to send people into space if it was a daredevil uh, mission. Well, I think every probably space mission is a daredevil mission in a sense. I, I, I don't, I, I don't I, think it has anything to do with my music, but I think you keep. I think people would, the, well, I'm just making the point because I'm, I've got this, uh, you know, this, this I get up it. here. I, just don't, I think this it's picture. like a red herring. I don't understand why you're, why you're harping on the, I guess I'm just here. still a little bit upset about the emotional it's like being mad. It's like being mad at Madonna for wearing a bustier, I guess, or something. No. Yes. Cause it's like, Oh, that was from a different time. That was from like the old West. Why is she wearing that? And why would you, well, it has this, Music like a virgin has nothing to do with the old West. Well, certainly, I mean, one could say it has to do with a bustier. I mean, look, but that's not the point, John. The point is, is that why did you do a soundtrack collection? Like, let's just talk about that. Let's just zero in on that, the, on that, on that aspect of it. You did a soundtrack. Why a soundtrack? Tell me why soundtracks. Well, like I said, I, my jazz uh, interest moved a little bit toward uh, electronic sound and the use of the Moog synthesizer. Uh, that's the, the 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 synthesized piano that I worked with, and uh, a worked lot of with. soundtracks from when I was, you know, like probably in my uh, it was in the '80s, like movies that I appreciated. A lot of the movies were in the '80s on the album. I wanted to do covers, so that's that's how it came about. And and that is the thing, I guess, that I I find interesting about soundtracks because it's so evocative of films that may be very important to you, that may have hit a chord uh, for you uh, or one uh, at a particular time in their life. Maybe they watched it uh, with someone, you know, like Chariots of Fire. I really have very very strong visceral associations with that movie so like, that up like, until you're, now you're have been incredibly positive, uh, and now. It's it's almost it's it's almost like you're desecrating the film in a way. Did you like have an experience with Chariots of Fire that I don't know about? Like that that it's this important to you? I mean, it, I, mean it, I, didn't, I, I don't mean I didn't mean to like ruin a movie for you, but I you know the it's uh, like anything the the music from the movie is can be reproduced. You know, yeah, I, it I can be. It Let me let's play. Way. Let's play the um, theme from Love Story, which is a um, an Was incredible. This another like really important movie in your life, Love Story. I mean, I think for a lot of people um, our age, John, uh, Love Story was. Um, a, uh, a a seminal love film. Love Story was made in like 1975 or seven, right? Yeah. So you would have been what, like uh, ten, less than ten years old, and yeah. you. 
that was a movie that was important to you? Yeah, it was one I think that 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 um, was foundational in my uh, sense of what love meant. Yes, I think the uh, the sacrifice and the mutual respect uh, between um, uh, the, the the two leads um, mm-hmm. was uh, was in many ways, like I say, foundational for me and became a a model uh, for really in many ways what I imagined. My, um, my. So you base all your relationships on is love is love story. Well, look, look, as you know, John, tragedy. John, it was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. But yeah. um, as you know, um, I even at a very young age was contemplating going to law school in Boston. This is a story about a Harvard uh, law student. I did not get into Harvard, uh, but that's okay. Um, I certainly based had, on the way you're arguing, I'm not I'm not surprised about that. Well, that's the case, and it was uh, uh, to see um, Oliver Barrett, who was played by Ryan O'Neill, um, uh-huh. and I can uh, tell Alec, you just looked it up, so that's that's good. I, I didn't uh, just look it up, John. It's it's like I say, it, it's a very that's in, uh, in your head. Well, I just yeah. I like I say I, I I remember the movie. It was important to me. Alan McGraw, uh, of course, I had a massive oh, crush right. on. Uh, and um, let's let's just did you have the like did you have the same kind of crush you had on all those runners and in Chariots of Fire, or is it a different kind of crush? It was a different kind of crush. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've no nothing wrong with any kind of crush. I was just asking. Well, it was different. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here is uh, your rendition. And I should tell people there's a well here here's your rendition of love story the theme no. from love story I guess the uh, uh, yeah. I guess the yeah, good those, news I mean, is that was, uh, this, that we're was, not going to get uh, a copyright strike because that is indiscernible. Well, that's how I made the album. I mean, I would have never been able to make the album if I could play. It would have been too expensive. Because you would have had to license uh, the the rights and to actually play the music yeah but that doesn't that as doesn't opposed take away to with the, licensing take, the rights take, to that, butcher that, that, the that, music that doesn't take away from the artistry of what i did i don't think um it uh it certainly doesn't because, uh, it, i i don't because, know how you could take artistry away i mean like you know what what you know what what could you possibly take away from the null set as it were i'm not sure what you're referring to well, my suggestion is is that uh, it, it doesn't take away from the artistry, because I think, frankly, I I think it's a very hard you'd be very hard pressed to, to suggest that there's artistry there. I think I, I don't know whether you're the like uh, you know the gatekeeper for art. I didn't know that. Well, I mean, I think this is you don't have to really be much of a gatekeeper uh, to you know make an assessment like when you take songs. That are so I mean, evocative, I've been to, I've been, I've, so I've been evocative, and really, in many ways, sever the relationship between um, the listener and all of the emotional investment they had in a song, in a film, in this case, because they're uh, soundtracks. I mean, I, I've been to, I've been to your apartment, and I've seen your art, and m- most of it's like motivational posters and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's what I choose to to motivate myself. One of the other ways I like motivate a, like myself a, is like to like a cat, like two cats, and one one's like wearing a hat and it says like "You go, girl," like stuff like that. That's you know, in your let me let me tell you something else that used to uh, motivate me, John. Mm-hmm. It was Axel F. It was the. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. Nobody excuse me one second. Here we go. It was um it was Axel F. 
You, so your favorite movies of all times were Chariots of Fire, Love Story, and Axelon. Beverly Hills Cop was a lot of fun. And I would watch that movie, and, and sometimes, like, it was just whenever I felt... Um, I mean, honestly, can I just say something? I, that I think is the like iconic version now, like based on, I, and that's this is my opinion. It is, I, it's the it's the version I did. I don't like to. I'm not like just bragging. It's, this is not just braggadocio. I think it is like actually better than the original version. Well, I mean, I I don't you know I'm I'm looking at it. It's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. People can go to, um, they can search John Benjamin Jazz Daredevil, um, the soundtrack collection. It yep. is uh, via pop- subtop. It's pop- very, very hard to find, frankly. Um, well, I mean, it's not getting uh, the the attention that I think think that I, that I thought it would have. But I, you know, I m- music is very subjective. People so. can search for it. John Benjamin Jazz Daredevil, the soundtrack collection. And your what you call is now the iconic version of, of Axel the F. of Axel F. The theme to Beverly Hills Cop has received just over a thousand views, and yeah. two two comments. One is holy cringeworthy, Batman. <laughs> okay, all right, that's all right. That's yep. fine. I get I get that people might not get it. Well, uh, how could it both it be the new, I mean, I, I, like, I, iconic version, and people don't get it? Uh, Van Gogh wasn't uh, famous till uh, till after he died, posthumously. His work Who? was not respected. Van Gogh. <laughs> I think you find it's Van Gogh. Is it, oh, <laughs> well, like I, I pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. But you, you go, you go, girl. Uh. John, um, now apparently Sub Pop Records put this out. Do I, I, uh, I mean they, like, they did? They did put it out. They, it's, it's out. It's it's out. It's available, and it's actually an album that people could buy. Yeah, it's they, on orange vinyl. It's a collectible. It is on orange vinyl, uh, and uh, there is the my re, my version uh, with the sheet music included of Chariots of Fire, so you can play my version of Chariots of Fire at home. If you can play piano, you can play it the way I did it. And uh, there's also a free patch that's on the album if you're interested in patches. There's a free patch? Like yeah, a, like a like patch. A like, you'd, you'd, like you'd stitch on patch that you could put on your... on your. Uh, you can't put it on your car because it's stitch on. So you could put it on like your clothes or... You you could stitch it on something where that you could put a needle into. Let's talk about your um, your promo video. You um, uh, people can see that we will link to that as well on the majority dot fm. Yeah, not it's, a lot of people watch that one either. No, um, yeah. it is. I have to say, it, like I said, it's ahead of its time a little bit, maybe. So it's not doing as well as I thought it would. Be. You know, it uh, depicts you, um, I'm not going to ruin it, uh, but it depicts you uh, going into a musical um, practice uh, session. Where where exactly was that? I was in Budapest. Budapest. In, uh, yeah, in Hungary. Uh, we flew to Budapest where we recorded uh, with a real orchestra, I think 75-piece orchestra, uh, where I entered uh, without them knowing the the way I played, and they uh, played along with me. So that was a live session that we recorded. Um, I wonder if any of those musicians um, have recovered from that situation. But, John, when was that? When did you shoot that little uh, video? That, that was pre-pandemic, so it was in, uh, I believe, in in January, or December of pre of, pre-pandemic, uh, when in fact, yeah. actually, COVID nineteen was within Europe at that time, and the way that it got to New York was people <laughs> traveled 
from Europe to New York, which I believe is where you live. Yeah. And one of and the I key vectors for COVID-19 has been music halls mm. that are closed in where people are exerting um, efforts in a almost like a soundproof room, John. Well, that's true. Uh, there was not great ventilation in Hungary in the studio. There were a lot of people in one room. Uh but Has it occurred I, to you that it, you, it, you videotaped inadvertently perhaps the uh, the primary vector for the uh, for COVID-19 to reach uh, the United States of America? I mean, it's an interesting conspiracy theory. I don't I don't like. I, Is it a conspiracy? I, I, What's the conspiracy? I, I can tell you this. Uh, Ru Rudy Giuliani was there at the same time meeting with uh, what I believe to be the Ukrainian uh, mobsters uh, to gin up some other conspiracy theories uh, within the Trump administration. He was there simultaneously with me. I did not see him. I had nothing to do with that. How did you know he was there? I had dinner with him. Uh, so, John, um, what 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 inspired you to do this? Well, uh, like I said, I wanted to, uh, for many years, to do a follow-up, uh, and I wanted to explore uh, jazz in a new realm uh, using electronic uh, uh, music. Uh, I f uh, follow in the footsteps of, of, of the great jazz artists who've had all, who have done so, Miles Davis in particular, I think. I'm not comparing myself to him, but he did do what I did. Uh, you know, he went from... I mean uh, you 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 uh, you you are comparing uh, comparing him to you, and um, I mean well, to be thank honest you with very you, much. If that's what you you're inferring, I appreciate it. Uh, maybe contrasting is really what you should be doing. I mean, I, I I almost think that frankly, it's an insult to contrast you with Miles Davis because it implies that you are similarly situated enough to be contrasted. When in fact, it would be like I don't know. Um, I mean, if I if I have to if I if I can be as honest as possible, I I did think that maybe if I use a synthesizer uh, or a Moog synthesizer it might sound a little better than when I first played on acoustic because acoustic really does expose all your mistakes and uh, with the synth synthesizer, I thought that it might uh, do a little better at disguising some of those mistakes, but I'm I'm not sure it did. Um. Have you heard from any of the um, the people in the jazz community? Uh, people in the jazz community, I imagine, have already learned their lesson. But in terms of any of the people who actually wrote or composed any of these songs, um, I imagine it was um, disturbing for them to see you have, actually yeah. present this in some form of professional way. Uh, I mean, so far, I like I haven't heard any anything from any of the people who who wrote and performed the originals. Not yet. I, but like I said, it's only been out there a few weeks, and maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe um, Harold Faltermeyer would would want to email me if he's listening to your show. Well, uh, John. So, what's next for you? Well, uh, I certainly will keep, uh, you know, plugging away at my jazz. I, and, you know, like albums, you wouldn't know this, but they take a long time. Uh, and a lot of thought goes into them. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect another album within the next five or ten years. But okay. hopefully okay. if things go well, I will put, I will put out a third album uh, and continue the canon, I guess, uh, for the fans, all, oh. all 280 of them. I am going to mark this down, uh, 2025. We can anticipate your next album. That's very, very exciting. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and like I, like I like to say, I, I, yeah, yes, it is true that I can't, play uh piano but i do 
uh, assert that I am the best at not being able to play piano. Well, and I would also suggest that comes that also includes the uh, electronic organ. Uh, John Benjamin, the Jazz Daredevil soundtrack collection is out on Sub Pop. We will put a link to that and to your promo video at majority.fm. Uh, thank you for coming on and uh, sharing. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm sorry I, I made you unhappy. And may, maybe you, you know, it's just it. I, I was okay with bringing you on. You know, we are um, certainly friendly. And I, mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I was looking forward to it. These are a lot of, like I said, movies that were very important to me when I was younger. And uh, in times like these, sometimes it's nice to sort of just, it's like comfort food. And then it's like going down and sitting in front of your favorite comfort food, let's say macaroni and cheese, and, and finding that the cheese has gone bad, that it's rancid. And so, huh. yes, it, 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 it threw me off a little bit, but I'm sorry if that came across in this interview. I apologize. Um, no, I mean, I, I hope that you, you know, go watch Chariots of Fire and have some macaroni and cheese now. All right. Well, uh, thank you for coming on, John Benjamin. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs>